All right, let us go ahead and pray before we get started with our workshop and then we'll just get straight into it. Let's pray. God, we thank you for uh, technology. We thank you for the creative ways that we get to connect with each other in a time that feels very unusual and unnatural and unheard of. Um, God, we just love that we get to come together and dig into the art of acting, dig into um, playing characters and telling stories that are not our own. Um, and I just pray that as we dig into how to do that on screen, that you will show us something new that we maybe haven't uh, experienced or we didn't know before. And I just pray that you will give us a chance to um, um, just experience something in, in a new way uh, and to just thank you for being a creative God who gives us this chance um, and just to let us develop our gifts and our skills a little bit more today. We pray all this in your precious name. Amen. All right. Awesome. So acting for screen and acting for stage are pretty similar, to be honest. Um, there are some differences which we're going to go through, but what you would normally do on stage, the preparation and the way that you move and all that kind of stuff generally is going to be fairly similar to what you would do on set if you're on screen. Um, but there are some differences. So today what I'm going to kind of do is I am going to generalize it a little bit. Um, I am going to make clear distinctions between what acting on stage looks like and what acting on screen looks like. Um, but just before we go on, I want you to understand like they are very similar. The um, art form is still the same. It's still acting. You still do the same preparation that you would do, whether it's on stage or on uh, camera. The execution of that particular thing is what changes a little bit. So it's the way that you act and, and what you have to focus on on stage isn't necessarily what you focus on when you're on screen. Um, so just before I begin, I want you to know like we are covering like the basics of screen acting, but it's not exclusive just to screen and just to stage. They do overlap a lot, but what we're gonna do is kind of just focus on how these two things are different. So does everybody have a pen and paper for me? Yes. All right. I want you to go down and we're going to start off just by, um, you don't have to use the whole page if you don't want to, maybe just part of the page, but I want you to make two separate columns. I want you to make film, screen, and then theater, stage. You can use film and theater or you can use screen and stage, whatever you want. I'm going to try and refer to it as screen and stage um, just to make it simple for today. So once you have that, give me a thumbs up. You have one side that says film, one side that says theater, one side that says screen, one side that says stage. Give me a thumbs up once you've got that. All right. Oh, Sarah's got the little thumbs up option. Nice. Okay. So when we're looking at acting on screen, um, a lot of the times it's going to be much smaller than what you do on stage. Obviously, when you're on stage, you have an audience that is sitting either five feet away or 10 feet away or maybe even 100 feet away. Um, and your performance has to be the same for the person in the front row all the way to the person in the very back row. So if the person in the back is like 99 feet away from you, your performance has to make sure that you reach them. So oftentimes when you're looking at stage acting, it's going to be bigger. Um, it's going to be more outward. If there's something happening in your head, we're going to have to see that thought in your body as well. We can't just see it happening in your head. You have to um, like emphasize that with your whole body. When we are looking at acting for screen, oftentimes we're going to look at different shot types in a second, but oftentimes it's going to be smaller and it's going to be quite intimate. So it's actually almost like you're just having a conversation with somebody one-on-one. -on -one. You're not speaking to this massive crowd. You're not inviting this massive crowd into your space. You're actually just speaking very directly and the camera is what does the job of bringing the audience to you or pulling the audience away depending on what needs to happen. So acting for film is going to be a lot more intimate if you have a thought or you feel a thought, it's going to be on the inside. You don't have to express that as visually on the outside. So if you're acting for stage, if you're shocked, it might be, <gasps> and that face can make it all the way to the back. But if you're shocked when you're on film, it might just be the small thing like your eyebrows kind of come in together. It doesn't have to be as big and as um, dramatic. Um, some of the other things when you're on stage, you're going to be very aware of vo like voice. So your voice needs to make sure it carries all the way to the back. So you're going to be looking when you're on stage about projection. We've all heard that word many, many times, right? Project, project. I can't hear you. If you're in the back row, talk to the person in the back row. Imagine I'm an old lady who's sitting in the back of this audience. Can I hear you? No, I can't. I got to make sure you talk loud. 
But for screen acting, oftentimes there are a whole lot of microphones around you and you want to still make it feel like it's real and it's intimate. So you don't have to worry about projecting your voice and being loud. Because if you come into um, an audition and you, you slate, so slate is where you come in and say, hi, I'm Caitlin Jackson and I am auditioning for the role of Mary. And I go, good morning, everybody. It's so nice to see you today and I use my stage voice, it's too much. Whereas if I'm just having a conversation with somebody, I could just say, good morning, everybody, and it's so nice to see you today. And I'm not using the same amount of energy in my voice as what I would on stage, but I still get the same intensity. Um, we're gonna look at energy and intensity a little bit later today if we have time, if not, it'll be next week. Um, one of the other differences between film and theater is that often with theater, you'll have a whole lot of rehearsal time. So you'll be in rehearsals for a long period of time, and then you only have one shot that night to get that part correct. But you do the whole play all in one go, and it's live. So you have like one take that night, but then you do the same thing the next night, and the same thing the next night, and the same thing the next night. So it's almost like you get one shot a day, but you get multiple days to do the same thing. With film, what it is, is you often don't have the same rehearsal time. Oftentimes it's just preparation you do on the back end. You may come in and the director says, okay, let's run the scene twice. Um, so we can make sure we've got the cameras correct. We make sure we've got the lighting correct. You guys have a chance to play with it. I can give you some notes. And then they start shooting. And if you don't get something perfect, if you mess up a line, um, when you're acting uh, for screen, when you're on a film set, they can go back and redo it. So you can redo the scene multiple times over and over and over. But once you're done shooting, you usually don't go back and do that again. So they both have an instance of being very real and raw and in the moment. Um, but the way that they repeat is different. With film, you do the same thing over and over and over all in that one day just to get that shot. And it can be quite tiring and quite strenuous. Um, for theatre, you'll only do it once that night. You might do it a couple of times in rehearsal that day if you have rehearsal, but for performance, you only do something once, but you only have that one shot to take it, to get it right that night, but then you do it again the next night and the next night and the next night. So you have to just pay attention. Um, and as an actor, it's like a different type of endurance that you have to have to either do something night after night after night, but one shot at a time, or to do it for one day, but have multiple shots all at once. Um, when you look at screen acting, oftentimes you actually don't have control of your performance. It's the director and the editor who get to pick what your performance looks like. So when you're acting on stage, you can um, manipulate the situation. You are the one that draws attention to or from something. So your eye contact, if you look to the side of the stage and you see something, the audience are gonna look there with you because they're following you. But on camera, if I'm here and I look off to the side, you don't see what I'm looking at. You have no way to know what it is that I'm actually looking at or what's caught my eye in the middle of our conversation. So the director might choose to show that or they might choose to still show your face. So you have to understand that your performance has to continue just like it does with theater. Your performance has to carry all the way through, but it's the director who decides when the audience sees different things. So there's an element of control that you have to give up in that sense. You have to be able to go, okay, I know what I'm doing. I know my character's journey. I know my character's response in this moment. I know my character's reaction. I'm living in it. I'm living truthfully in that moment. Um, but I also know like I am not in control of what the audience does or doesn't see. I'm not directing their focus. The editor and the director are doing that. Um, and then the other thing is um, oftentimes, uh, when we're looking at film and screen acting, um, you have to pay attention to the size of your performance. So energy and intensity are the two words we're going to use. When you are playing on a massive stage, like think, think like a musical theater piece where it's a huge stage and you have people sitting all the way back at the very top, what they call the nosebleed section, they can barely see your face. If you're feeling an emotion, if you're experiencing something as the character, that has to show through your whole body. But when you're on film, you get to see up close what's happening. So oftentimes you don't have to show with your whole body if you're feeling sad. If it's an extreme close up, which is just gonna be part of your face, then you still have to stab that same intensity, but the performance is just contained to this part that the audience can see. So we're gonna look at that in just a second. We're gonna look at framing. 
But there are kind of some basic, some, some similarities, but a lot of differences between stage and screen. So we'll have a chance. Does anybody have any questions about anything or anything they thought while we were talking? This is a chance for you to unmute yourself and just ask some questions about the differences between acting for stage or acting for uh, the screen. No questions? Okay, cool, moving on. All right, so what we wanna have a look at are some words, some vocabulary words. So I'm gonna give you a chance to write these down. Um, they're just words, you won't always use them as an actor. They're often words that if you're on set, you're gonna hear other people speak, but it's important as an actor that we understand them. So when we're talking about uh, theater, you know, we talk about downstage, we talk about your blocking, we talk about um, projection, we talk about like all those kind of words. There are the same kind of key words in film that we need to be aware of as actors and we need to know what they mean for us. So we're gonna go through that. So the word principal photography, I'm gonna type these in the chat. So that if you're worried about spelling, you know how to spell them. Principal photography. So if everybody can see the chat, if you are confident with how to spell it, that's not a problem. It's just there for you if you want to make reference to it. But principal photography means it's the main shooting period. So that's when you're going to have your lead actors. You're going to film the really important scenes. Um, you're going to film most of the dialogue that happens between kind of lead actors. You're going to have the main director on set. You're going to have like all of your first people. We have often like the director, you then have like the second AD, the assistant director, or you have the second unit who film like the extra stuff. So all the establishing shots, they might film um, just shots with extras. But when you're working with the main cast of that, uh, that performance, that piece, um, you're going to look at the principal photography, which is when that main shooting schedule happens. If you hear the word action, do we know what the word action means? Thumbs up for a yes if you know what action is. Action means to start acting. So there are actually a couple of words that you'll hear in sequence that happen with, um, with uh, film. So you'll hear quiet on set, which means all external noise has to stop. We want everything absolutely silent so that we have no other noise happening other than what we need to record. You'll hear rolling, which means that the cameras start rolling. So they start, they push record um, and it means that everything's ready to go. You're not going to have someone start acting and then push the camera and miss the first part of their performance. So you'll always hear quiet on set first to make sure everything's quiet. You'll hear rolling to make sure that you have the cameras moving and then you'll hear action. Um, and action means to start acting. Um, oftentimes what you might hear is you might hear background. So you'll hear somebody call out the word background or background action. And that means that if there are extras in the background, say you're shooting in a, a mall and you need people to be walking back and forth, you'll have them start walking so that when you start talking over the top, the lead actors start talking, you don't have like the awkward thing where everybody is still, and then everyone suddenly starts walking all at the same time. You have it look natural, like there's already this movement happening. And then action for the actor, if you're the lead actor in that, um, then that's what you pay attention to. Once I say action, it means that the scene is started and you run all the way through. So to finish a scene, they call cut. Let me actually type all these words down. I realized I just ran through a whole lot without typing it. So we have quiet on set, we have rolling, we have action, and we have cut. So the word cut means to stop. So to stop recording, to stop the acting, and that is called by the director. Um, I know that sometimes you'll see bloopers where the actors kind of mess up a line and they just start laughing and they go, okay, let me try that again. Um, and sometimes that happens. Sometimes it does and you have no way to recover from it and everybody kind of knows, okay, this is a really dead take. We need to try and do this again. But uh, oftentimes, or not often, more, like 99% of the time, the only person who ever stops the scene is the director. Uh, as an actor, your job is to keep going unless something super, super obvious happens and you all know there's no way to recover from it. Even if you think your performance is not that good, um, sometimes in theater rehearsals, you can go, okay, stop, hold on, let me just try that again. You gather yourself and you get back to it. When you're in a film set or when you're on a film set, you have no control over that. That's all up to the director. Your job is the actor 
is to keep your performance going because there might be something in that take that the director loves and really wants to use. And you stopping that take partway through um, is, is going to mess with what they want to create. So it's a really collaborative thing between the director, the editor, everybody, the actors. Uh, you want to make sure that you give the director their chance to do their job. So their job is to call cut for you. Um, let's see. Okay, the word continuity, that's a big one. Continuity. So continuity refers to um, keeping details the same and consistent the whole way through. So I'm sure we've all seen it when we've had movies where in one shot, the person's hair is in the front, then the next time you flip back to them, their hair's behind their shoulder, and then they go, the camera switches to the other person, and then when they come back, their hair's back in front of the shoulder. That's a disruption in continuity. So that means that there is a detail that is not the same the whole way through. And it makes it very obvious that you've done one take and then you've reshot it and you've mixed them together. With film, the whole point is that you want, you want everything to look seamless. You want it just to look like it's all one day, one conversation, one moment. So continuity are, um, it is what we, it's the flow of the shots, the flow of the scenes um, and making sure that all those details are the same. So you as an actor, when you're on stage, things can be different night to night and that's okay. But when you're on a film set, take after take after take, you have to make sure that um, your actions and your movements and your blocking is the same. If you're eating something in the middle of your take and you have the fork up to your mouth before you say a line, every time you do a take, you need that fork in the same place at the same point in that line. Otherwise, they might go back to a take where it's on your fork and then you've already eaten it and you're cutting up your broccoli instead of your meat. But then the next time they, shoot, they cut back to you, you've got the broccoli or you've got the meat back on your fork again. So as an actor, that's another skill that we have to develop for acting on screen is to make sure that we're consistent with all of those details. Um, let me just see if I have any other ones. That's kind of it. They're kind of like the big vocabulary words, just general on set stuff that we need to know. So now, before we move on, do we have any questions about those words? Nope, no questions. All right, let's move on. So now we're getting to the nitty gritty stuff as the actor, this is what we need to know. So we're gonna look at shots and framing. So framing basically means how much of the scene do we see in a camera? So do we see like a, a wide shot? Do we have a medium shot, a close-up shot, or an extreme close-up? We're gonna go through all of those things. So we're gonna start off with what is called the big close, if I can spell, big close-up, or the, ex, uh, no, let me go from bottom to top, actually. I am going to go from the bottom to the top. So we're gonna go with, extreme long shot. So the extreme long shot, this is also called the extreme wide shot. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull up an image so we can have a look at it and I can explain to you what, um, what that will look like. So let me see if I can um, screen share this extreme long shot, okay. So do we see this picture right here? Give me a thumbs up if you see this picture right here. So we have these big rolling clouds over on one side. We have the red dirt at the bottom and we have a tiny, tiny little look at what is actually happening um, on, in the screen. So this establishing shot, um, this is from Mad Max Fury, in case anybody's wondering, Fury Road, Mad Max Fury Road. Um, this shot, basically what you want is you wanna focus on the scenery. You wanna focus on the location and what's happening. So the actors are down here, very, 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 very small. Um, and quite honestly, the lead actors may not have actually been shooting. They may have just had stand-ins for this day. Uh, but you have the actors down here, but the focus of the shot is all of the scenery that's happening around. Um, and as the actor, there's no detail that you really have to worry about. To be honest, with establishing shots, you probably won't even be there when they're filming that. So that's our establishing shot. The next one we want to look at is our long wide shot. So we have uh, this shot here. This is from um, the movie North by Northwest. And this is what would be classified as a long shot or a long wide shot. 
um, or a wide shot actually. Uh, so basically it's the same idea as the establishing wide shot. You have a really big image of the background, but this time the actors are actually in more detail. So they're up a little bit closer. Um, depending on the view that you have of the actors, this might be the lead actors or they might have the stand-ins for this as well. That's just up for the director to decide. But the whole point of this is that you see the whole body of the actor in the shot, but you're still focusing on the scenery. You're still focusing on their surroundings. So basically for the actor, what this is, is it's your relationship to the environment that you're in. And in this case, we can kind of see a relationship between these two characters. Um, so it's important if you're in a long shot or a wide shot to know that you still need to be switched on. You still need to be performing. We never stop that. Um, but they're not going to see some tiny detail in your eyes. It's more to do with your whole body and how you're relating to the space that you're around. Next, we have our full shot. So we see this picture here. You know who this is? Thumbs up if you know who it is. Yep, it's my cousin, Chris Hemsworth. He's not actually my cousin. <laughs> I like to tell people that. But this is what we call a full shot. So here, the main focus is the actor in the screen. You have their whole body in the screen, um, but unlike the shot beforehand, which was the long shot or the wide shot, this is really focusing in on the actor. We still see the scenery, it's still a big part of what's going on, but we're really focusing in on the actor as a whole. So as you are doing this scene, um, if you are told that this is going to be a full shot, as the actor, you have to be aware that whatever you're feeling on the inside, whatever might be showing in your face, it has to translate through your whole body. So if you have a look, his, uh, he doesn't look super pleased about what's going on, right? His face is kind of a little bit um, uh, like, what's the word? Um, his face is like a little like mad or just like cautious or like scared or is like ready for something. You also see that Angry. in your hands. Go ahead. He's angry. <laughs> He's angry, he does kind of look angry, yeah. Um, but you also see that in his hands here as well. And you see it in the way he's standing. He's not facing something full on like I'm ready to go. He's a little off to the side. So there's something that he's like blocking, he's preparing for, he's not facing it front on. Um, so there's this little bit of maybe hesitation or like I'm getting prepared for what's about to happen. Um, but we see that in his whole body. It's not just in him. Uh, yeah, and that one is definitely important to show that your relationship to um, the environment that you're in, but it also shows your relationship to the other people. If you remember, like, I'll go back and show this again. When you see this, you see him here standing away from everybody else at the bottom. And that's significant because it shows that he is the standout in this moment, that he is the one we're focusing on, that these are people that he's leading, um, but they don't have any direct uh, they don't have a direct connection to him at this point in time. This is about him and how he's feeling. We are going to see this medium shot, medium wide shot from the knees up. So this is what is um, splitting the difference between a full shot and the next one that we're going to see. This one here is called a cowboy shot, which means that instead of being from the knees up, it's actually from the thighs. And this goes back to when they were filming old Western movies and you'd have like the standoff where the guy would have the guns in his side and you want to focus in and, and see the whole cowboy, but you really just want to see where that gun is and how fast they whip it out. This is a cowboy shot. If you were to imagine that they had uh, their little gun holsters down by, uh, down by their thighs. Uh, that's what this is. So this for the actor is to know that it is a full body shot. So again, what you're feeling on the inside, what you're experiencing is showing on your face, but it's also resonating through your whole body. Um, so you want to make sure that everything's switched on. You're not just kind of like flapping your arms about with no purpose. You have a real purpose to that. Um, yeah, so you want to make sure that you pay attention to your face and body with that. So let me pull up the next shot. Okay, so now we have our medium shot. So this medium shot is different from, yeah, we know what movie this is. This is The Hunger Games, one of my favorites. This is different from the medium wide shot because in the medium shot, you're just seeing from the waist up. So if you see at the bottom of the screen, you have her holding the bow and arrow, you have him, uh, it's a little above his waist, but it's pretty much right at her waist, right at her hips. So this for the actor, well, as, as a shot itself, 
it reveals a lot more detail in the subject. It reveals a lot more detail in their faces, in how they're standing. We're starting to get really close to the face. We're starting to see what it is they're feeling and experiencing. It's becoming a lot more intimate for the actor and the audience. Um, and it emphasis, emphasizes the subject, but it also emphasizes the surroundings. So what's going on behind them? What are they, what are they doing in the middle of what's going on around them? Um, and for the actor, it's really important that we know we're starting to see your face. So whilst on our screen right now, their faces are like maybe this big, like maybe as big as our nose. When you're looking at, I see your question, I'll come back to it in just a sec. Um, when you see this in the theaters, you've got to know that when you're looking at a movie screen, their face isn't going to be like the size of your nose or the size of a, a coin or something. Their face is actually going to be probably five or six feet up in the air. Um, so you really have to start paying attention to what is your face doing? Is it doing what it's supposed to you? Are there things, are there habits that are coming through that show you as the actor and aren't from the character? Um, so this is where you have to get really close to that detail. All right, so the next one we have is what we call a medium close up. And this is where we start to get a lot more detail and it becomes a lot more intimate between the actor and the audience. So we see this image right here of our medium close up shot. Give me a thumbs up if you're a Star Wars fan. Yeah, it's okay if you're not, it's okay if you are. Everybody is entitled to what they enjoy. I quite like Star Wars. But this is our medium shot. So a medium shot, sorry, medium close up shot is really just focusing on the chest upward. So we're starting to get really close to the actor's face. We're really making sure that we keep them in the focus. The subject of the shot right now is the actor. So right now we have him. Um, this is sort of an over the shoulder shot uh, ish. We don't need to worry about them too much right now, um, but we're really focusing in on him and his side of the conversation. So when you start getting to medium close-ups like this, you're really focusing on what somebody is saying, how they're saying it, what do they feel, what's their relationship with the character. This is where all of those details really start to be very obvious. Um, his face right there, if you have a look at it, he's not entirely pleased with what's going on. He's not happy with what he's seeing or anything like that, um, or what he's hearing from this other person. So we can tell that even the way that he's hunched over a little bit, he's not standing back, he's not leaning backwards, so he's not distancing himself, he's leaning into the other person. So he wants to know what's going on. Um, and it's important as the actor that um, you understand how much distance there is or isn't between your uh, the other person in the scene here. Um, so the, the audience is starting to be draw, drawn into you and drawn into your performance, but there is still that distance there. So we're not quite like intimate and super close yet, but it's like if somebody was standing off to the side watching you have a conversation, what are they seeing? They're experiencing it, but they're not invited into that conversation just yet. But that's where we will get to in just one second. Let us have a look at this close up. So this, the close up, is probably the best and hardest shot for an actor. It is the best because it's going to give you a very good chance to show your skill, to show how good you are, to show what you can do, to show how truthful you can be. Um, when we're this close to the actor, we're intimate as the audience. We want to know what they're thinking. We want to know what they're feeling. Uh, and when we're focusing on acting for screen, it's all about the eyes and it's all about what's happening behind the eyes. And the close up shot is what gives you the chance to do that. So it's all about the minute details on your face, about what you're feeling, how does that translate on your face? But not in the sense of this is how I'm going to play it. So I'm, I'm angry, so I'm going to grimace my, I'm gonna grimace and my, my top lip is gonna be tense and my eyebrows are gonna be fired. We don't want to focus on um, like the specifics of how we play it. As an actor, we need to be aware of how is our face expressing how we feel. But when you're this close, if there's no connection to your heart, if there's no connection to what you're really feeling and experiencing, it's not gonna come across in your eyes. Um, if I get a chance today, I'm gonna show you something about dead eyes, but uh, we may have to say that for next week. But this is where you wanna keep the intensity. It's all just in your face. So while before, if we were very happy, we'd be able to show it through our whole body. Now it's just in our face. This is the only place that we can show it, but we still have to have the same intensity behind our emotion in this close-up shot that we would have had in our full body shot. 
Um, so this is the best thing for the actor. It really gives you uh, a time to shine and to show how good you are, how much you love your craft, how dedicated you are, um, and just how connected you are. So this is all about feeling and being, not about acting or pretending. It's about truthful moments, being truthful to the moment, being truthful and committing to what the character wants. What do you want as this character? What do I need? What are the obstacles that are standing in my way? So all of that script work that you do really comes into focus here when we believe that you are this person and that you've done all the preparation and that you want exactly what they want. So this is where all of your preparation gets to come out. And then the final shot that we're gonna look at is extreme close up right here. So let me pull up the image of this one. Oh, it's not opening. Now it is, there we go. All right, and so this last one is our extreme close up right there. Do we see that? So all we see in an extreme close up is exactly what the director chooses to focus on. So in this instance, all we're seeing are her eyes and her nose and a little bit of her eyebrows. We're not seeing anything to do with the background. We're not seeing any other actor. We're not seeing anything else other than her eyes, her nose and her eyebrows, which means as the actor, our job in this moment is to be so truthful that whatever we're feeling, experiencing is just shown through our eyes. Um, if this were a picture of a hand and it was just a close up of your hand, if you're feeling happy, um, your hand might be relaxed. If you're feeling tense for some reason, your hand might be tense, but you just have to show all of that emotion just in whatever is in shot, just in your hand. My face, whether I'm angry or frustrated or whatever it is that's causing my hand to react like this or respond in this way is not gonna be in shot. All I can tell the story with is my hand and my hand and what it does. Um, the other thing to be mindful of when you are acting in such close-ups, um, whether it's a close-up, whether it's an extreme a close-up shot, uh, you have to be mindful of how much you are or are not moving. If you're, again, we're thinking about the screen size, we, right now, her eyes, because I'm looking at it on a computer, her eyes are probably a little bit bigger than what they would be in real life, but not too much. But the minute you see this on a TV, you see it in the theaters, you throw a projector up on your wall, her eyes are gonna be ginormous. They're probably gonna be like the size of tires or bigger, which means that everything that happens or everything that doesn't happen is magnified. It's like we've zoomed all the way in and we have a chance to be so intimate and so close with what's going on that we almost as the audience experience that ourselves. And that's a lot of weight for the actor to carry. It's a lot of weight, but it's a lot of fun to play with. Um, and that's where our work as the actor, our preparation, our script analysis, our preparation at home, our self taping to watch ourselves back um, and to take notes and to go, I really like this, but also our ability to just let go and be truthful in that moment. That's when it all kind of comes to play and comes, uh, comes to a head. So that is a very quick overview of all of our shots and kind of what it means for us as an actor to understand what those shots mean. So do we have any questions or anything you wanna say or point out or that you found interesting about camera shots and what that means for you as the actor? You can either type in the comment or you can unmute yourself. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So for a close-up shot, mm -hmm like a medium size one, do they actually focus on the face or like, do they focus on other things? Uh, are you talking about a medium close-up shot or the close-up shot or both? Both. Okay, so just remember the medium close-up is generally the chest up um, and then the close-up is pretty much just your face. Oftentimes, um, so it's up to the director to choose that. So either the director might choose for this point in the story, the most important thing for us to see is to see the actor, to see the character and what they're feeling, experiencing, what's happening to them. So they'll choose whether they want to see your face or whether they want to zoom into a different part of your body. Um, they might decide that in that moment, it's actually not important to see your face and your facial reactions. It's more important to see um, like your hands. There are a lot of times where close-up shots might be like somebody putting their keys down or picking some keys up or putting down a really important document and we see the letter going onto the desk. Um, so 
in the script, it'll um, tell you what that will be, what shot it is. It might say a close up of hand putting letter on desk. Um, it might say close up of such and such's face or just such and such, the character's name. Um, but if you don't know or you want to be aware of what is it that's going to be in the frame, what is going to be the focus of this shot, you can ask and just say, what's my frame? So they can tell you and say, okay, just, just to make sure I've got it, it's going to be close up on my face and I have this much space. Got it. Okay. And there's the actor that tells you, okay, what is my playing space? Is it an inch away from my face? Is it my whole chest upward and I have to this far? Um, that's where you play with it. But as the actor also, it's important for us to... Um, know these shots going in. So if they say you've got a medium wide shot coming up of, of you as you walk across, um, as you walk across and open the door, we know, okay, all they're going to see is my chest up. Sounds good. That answer your question? Yes. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? I have a weird question. What, what shots are we technically in right now? You want to try and answer that? Let's see if we can figure that out. That's a really good question, actually. So let's go with me. Let's have a look at me and where I'm sitting. So first of all, before we name the shot, let's go ahead and you can either type it in the chat or you can uh, just unmute yourself. What do we see in the frame? What can we see? Your shoulders. Do you see my shoulders? Yep. What else do we see? You can see lots of background. We can see lots of background. Yep, my beautiful office. It looks very bland here. I promise my office is not bland, but this little corner, it is. Okay. No, what... it looks great to me. Oh, sorry, go ahead. It looks great to me. Ah, oh, thank you. Um, what don't we see in this shot? Because what don't we see is going to tell us a lot. So what aren't we seeing? You can't see your legs or your can't hands. Can't see my legs, can't see my arms. Yep. Can't see your thighs. You can't see what, sorry? Your thighs. Thighs, yep. So if we just see like my chest up, but the background is still quite uh, prominent, what shot would this be? Any ideas? Is it going to be an extreme close up? Shot? Medium yeah. close up. Yes, you got it. Medium close up is from the chest up. So if I were to pick up my camera, actually, if I were to just go back and stand back here a bit, now what um, this cowboy shot cowboy shot yep because we just see from the thighs up um i don't know if i'm able to do this if i go all the way back here stand my toes what kind of shot is this is that the full shot well you don't see my feet so it's not full body oh. this would be a medium shot medium shot because you see from my knees upward if I were to come and get really, really close to the camera, what kind of shot is this? Extreme close Extreme up. close up. Extreme close up. If I, just, <laughs> if I just fill the screen with my face, what shot is this? Medium close up. Just a plain close up. It's just yeah. a plain close up. Yep. Medium close up is when you see chest up, but if it's just the face, we have just a close up. That was a good question, Sarah. Nice job. All right. So we covered shots. We covered kind of what that means for us as the actor. Um, we sort of touched a little bit on the energy and the intensity. So when we're looking at acting, depending on what our frame is, that will depend on um, how energetic or how... Um, uh, how intense something needs to be and what part of our body that has to focus on. So again, if I'm just looking at my face, anything I'm feeling, if I'm feeling, let's say I'm feeling really anxious about something, normally I might be twisting my hands, um, I might be wringing my hands out, I might be grabbing my body, but I don't see any of that. All I see is my face. So my face, my eyebrows are what has to tell all of that. When we're looking at close-ups in particular, there are kind of four things that we wanna focus on when we're talking about acting for a close-up. So you'll wanna get your pen and paper ready so that you have this ready to go. And uh, so we've got it. So there are kind of four 
things that we want to look at when we're, we're acting for a close-up. So first of all, we want to have a look at what's called seamless acting. Let me type this in the chat. Seamless acting. Okay, so seamless acting is where it just looks absolutely flawless. We don't even know that you're acting. We don't see somebody acting or pretending. It's not like, I'm mad and I'm going to tell you how mad I am. It's none of that. It's all about actually being honest and real and pure with what we're doing, being so truthful to that moment, being so connected to the character's goals, their objectives, their obstacles, what's staying in their way, their action, their tactics. What am I trying to do to get what I want? If you play that and you play that well, your acting will be seamless. If you play as an actor trying to pretend that you're doing something, that's where we get either something that's being overplayed or underplayed. Do you understand what I mean when I talk about overplaying or underplaying? Thumbs up for yes, thumbs down for no. Yes, okay, good. Um, so that's the first part. We wanna make sure that we're simple and honest, which will make our acting seamless. The second thing is active listening. So I'm gonna type that in the chat as well. So active listening means that we are actively listening. We are switched on. We're not trying to anticipate. We're not trying to guess how the other person will say things. Yes, as the actor, we know what the next line is. Like we know the end game. We have all of that. Um, but that's where that contradiction lies. That's where this, this weird shift happens of being an actor and knowing the story because you've done the work, but also being the character in that moment and playing the truth of that moment, which means you don't know everything. You don't know what that other person is going to say. So if we are actively listening, we're allowing ourselves to almost turn off our head and just turn on our instincts. We're stopping uh, waiting for our cue word to say the next line and instead we're responding based on what that person says and also how they say it. Because each time you do a take or even if you're acting on stage, each time you act with somebody, it might shift a little bit. It might feel a little bit different. Um, so listening helps us actually generate real feelings. We actually get a chance to listen intensely, to hear it for the first time, to hear the subtext. What are they not saying to me? How are they saying this? How does that make me feel? And your head switches off and your heart and your instincts switch on and you can just go ahead and do it. So first of all, we have seamless acting. The second point for close-ups is active listening. The third point when we're looking at close-ups is what's called emotional availability. It's not actually emotional. I'm just saying it as I type it. Emotional availability. So emotional availability basically means that you are being honest and truthful and vulnerable in the moment. Um, you when you have a thought about something, when you feel something, maybe you're having a conversation between you and the other actor, like your characters are having a conversation and you really think that this person is your best friend and all of a sudden they say something that's, that's, uh, that offends you or that um, kind of makes you question, actually, are we friends? Because they say something that just feels a little bit off. Emotional availability means that as the audience, we will see that settle in. We'll see that hit come. We'll see you process it. We'll see the way it hurts your feelings. And we'll see you formulate what comes next. As the actor, you don't want to think through, okay, what's my reaction? Process the thought. Feel my feelings. And speak my next thing. Like We don't want to see all of that. That looks like it's overplayed. It looks dramatic. It reminds me of Joey from Friends uh, when he's like, smell the fart acting smell the fart and then you look to the camera like we don't need to do any of that that's just super over the top there's sometimes that that might work but more often than not it's not the right thing what we want in that moment is we want the truthful moment that happens between your two characters we want to see exactly what happens without you thinking about it it's almost just like the instinct kicks in so your your preparation is there it's the foundation your um active listening helps you hear what they have to say and your instinct is what gives you that emotional availability to let the audience go on that journey with you and the fourth thing that we want to look up when we're looking at close-ups is maximum exposure of the eyes maximum exposure of the eyes so when we're talking about maximum exposure of the eyes we want to make sure that the eyes can be seen and can be the focus. So if you're doing a close-up um, and uh, your eyes are kind of like shifting all over the place. So if I bring the camera close to me 
and then I, my eyes are shifting all over the place and I'm looking this way and then I'm flicking back and I'm looking back and then I'm flicking back and then I'm looking back and then I'm looking down at the ground and then I look back. My eyes are all over the place. And what that does is it disrupts the connection between the audience and the actor or the character. If I just keep my eyes focused on you and I just keep them here. We're actually building this relationship. We're building this connection and you're able to see exactly how I feel about something and exactly the intention that's behind what I'm saying. When I'm flicking back and forth and I'm changing my mind and I'm just looking around like normal people do, there's that disruption there. And it means that um, the, the power of all the work that you put in with your seamless acting, with your active listening, with your emotional availability, all of that gets lost because we can't just focus in on your eyes. The other thing that helps us maximize the exposure of our eyes is actually to limit how much we move. So if I'm here and I'm moving back and forth as I'm saying something and I'm, I'm going in and out, it's really hard. Even if I stare at the camera the whole time, it's really hard for you to stay connected to what I'm saying because I just keep moving everywhere and my head's flipping and like it's just doing weird stuff all the time. That's not going to help us in a close up. But if I can stay close and consistent and tell you exactly what I need to tell you. Make sure that nothing else is really moving on my body. Make sure that you're experiencing the same thing I'm experiencing. Then that's when we get maximum exposure of the eyes. So again, they're kind of like some really janky examples from me when I'm in a Zoom class with you. Um, but uh, yeah, they're kind of like the four things that happen with close-ups that we want to focus on when we're acting for close-ups or extreme close-ups even. Um, you basically want to make sure that you relax any tension in your face. You want to make sure that your enunciation isn't too over the top. Otherwise, it sounds very weird and unprofessional. On stage, that might carry, but on screen, it just feels really uncomfortable. Um, and you want to make sure that you um, limit any of your body or your head movements so that all people are focusing on is exactly what you want them to focus on, which is your eyes. Your eyes are the gateway to your soul. Someone famous said that. And we want to make sure that we keep our eyes uh, as, as the, the gateway to what's going on uh, for the character. So does that make sense with close-up acting? What we want to focus on? Yes? Okay, cool. Okay, so that is the end of our class today. There was a lot of information. You guys did great taking all those notes, asking questions. Um, so I will send you that email about your homework, making sure that you have the script and that you also have um, just the instructions of the two things and the link of where to send it. And then next Wednesday, we'll be back for class again. And we might look at some other different things. We might look a little bit about analyzing a script and how a film script is different to a stage script. Um, Cause there are some things that are a little bit different. Most of it's the same, but there are some things that's important for us to know. Um, and then we'll actually do some live scenes. I'll have some scenes that we can, uh, I'll send them to you ahead of time. Um, and then we'll be able to uh, play them off each other. So we'll actually get to work with somebody else on camera. All right, that's it. Guys, if you don't have any more questions, I will say peace out, Girl Scout, and I will see you later.